Why do you think you're here? You know that not many people come to conferences for different reasons. But the people who come are people who care. And I consider people who are eager to learn new things and step up and share their experiences and share new ideas and come out with something different for the community, for the craft, are the leaders in our industry. That's who you are. Why do you think that leadership without management matters? When you're a manager, then people, it's incentivized to work for you. They may not like you, they may rebel, they may be disgruntled, but they will be punished if they don't listen, right? So it's not, <laughs> this is not really something that you can be honest to yourself and say, hey, these people listen to me because I'm good. No, because they incentivize to do this. When you're leader, when you don't have the manager's authority, all of a sudden you see it as it is. People either follow you or they don't follow you. To me, leadership is something that is intrinsic to all of our testing profession. Because... We are the ones who cannot sit still. I think that the testers emerged as a profession because there were people who are not happy with the status quo. They are not in managerial positions. If you are happy, I'm happy for you. It's kind of different type of game. But whether you're a manager or you're not a manager, being a leader in this community, meaning you drive this industry forward. And uh, I believe that all testers have this intrinsic motivation to lead other people to something better. Isn't it amazing? Isn't it amazing? Um, one of the reasons that I started the conferences is I want to unite those people. We have something to say to each other. We want to see each other. We want to know who we are. We want to meet. Some of our people here are speakers. And some of our people here are listeners. Today. And tomorrow we're going to be switching. Right? And uh, I think the stories we hear throughout those days are the story of leadership. All of our stories are the stories of somebody who stepped up, standing up for the truth, standing up for, uh, I don't buy whatever you're telling me, people, right? You're saying it's all good, I don't buy it, right? And that takes courage, it takes courage, and it takes some preparation to do. Because some of us don't have enough skills to be comfortable in the leadership positions. But I think that all of us should learn how to be the leader and be comfortable about that. Because that's what you are. You probably don't know that you are. But believe me, the profession that you are in is a leadership profession. It's not an IT kind of sitting in the back. It's standing up for your right, for the right of your customer, for the right of your business, for the, for the right of your team. And that's all you do. So my message to you, learn how to do it well. You're already there. Just get some skills and that can get confidence of doing it really well. In 2011, um, I had kind of a breakdown of my whole life. I was uh, um, kind of realized that I'm not reaching to, you know, to the level of like um, my profession where my company recognizes me. 
And uh, I was in depression for like half a year. And then I was thinking, okay, so my company kind of doesn't care what I do and what I know. Who cares? And I look around and I'm like, I can speak to other people. I can find other people who have uh, the need to listen to me and learn from my experience. And that's how I started speaking at the conferences. My very first talk was 10 minute talk and I'm repeating it today, <laughs> actually, <laughs> eight years later. Um, and I'm confident, I'm, I'm comfortable here. I could talk for hours. Um, eight years ago, uh, after five minutes, I, I kind of, I get so scared that I kind of left the stage and I had like, two beers in a row, just to kind of like calm me down because I was so stressed. Today, I don't need to drink. I'm getting the energy from you guys and I'm really happy for you being here and learning and motivating each other to kind of take this leadership role and kind of go with it. Thank you. Oh, questions, yeah. Really? Questions? Anybody? Anyone? Yes. Um, what, uh, what advice would you give to a leader who uh, wants to improve the skills? Take a mentor. Okay. Get a mentor. Public speaking, please take a mentor because it's a skill. It's not something that you know when you're born. You don't know how to speak when you're born, right? Yes. Which means that you learn. Same way public speaking, you learn different techniques. And that really helps you to be confident on stage. And then you practice, practice, practice. I did a um, tutorial with Lisa, and Lisa is experienced speaker. And everybody knows what Lisa does. And so we had a dry run. And we had the walkthrough, and we had timing, and we went through the whole presentation uh, between us because Lisa wants to be confident that it's going to be okay. And it put everybody at, I, I never worked with Lisa before, but that really made a difference, and that really connected us. And then we went and like ran for three hours, like a workshop together, practice. You're welcome. I was just going to ask what's the most difficult part about coordinating a QA conference? What's, what's, what's the most difficult part of running a QA conference? Uh, getting time to sleep. <laughs> 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 I just took a half an hour nap. <laughs> I'm staring because um, I'm very excited about QA conferences. I, I, this is my, like, I don't do it for because I'm working for somebody. I do it because of this is my motivation. I really wanted to do bring people together. And I've been in many conferences. I was a speaker all over the world. And I'm seeing different conferences. And I know that um, in our profession, a lot of people are introverts. And I'm one of them. Maybe you don't know. But I do. And... Uh, I was looking for different kind of environments, how to make people talk to each other, laugh, uh, connect. Uh, so my conferences are small, on a reason. Yeah, I, it's expanded, but it's still small because I really want people talking to each other. And that's why you see here, like you see the big first name and small last name and smaller what you do today, because we don't know what you're going to do tomorrow. <laughs> so don't uh, get hooked up on your title for today, but talk to each other, be friends. Any other questions? Quick. Yeah. It's you. Okay. Uh, so other than being a leader, is there any other essential piece of advice that you would give to a software tester? A software tester? Yeah, essential piece of advice. Learn how to make friends. 
<laughs> Seriously, because you are in like naturally your job is to tell other people that they do a bad job. <laughs> <laughs> you you have to deal with it. So and don't take the blame because that's your job. On the other hand, don't be kind of harsh on people because some of those mistakes are systematic. It's not because this person really wanted to be doing that, but for example, the system is so complex that people cannot think through all different kind of connections. And um, it's not because they're stupid. It's because the environment is not too helpful. So don't take it personally, but also don't make other people take it personally as well. Be a friendly advisor like this. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.